The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. We are building a glorious church that will be able to possess the nations. And the glorious church is made up of victorious Christians. Glorious Christians build glorious church. And we have been saying that the victory that we have, we had it in his death. His death purchased for us the victory that has overcome sin. The world and Satan. We are seeing through the eternal life and the eternal Holy Spirit, we are able to live a victorious Christian life. We have said that. The difference be between the difference of the effects of any two Christians is the fact of their understanding of who Christ is in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Depends on the true characteristics of a spiritual person, we have said, is the ability to understand correctly the meaning of the Lord Jesus Christ in his life. Last week we read from 1st John 3 from verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavish on us. That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will, will be has not yet been made known. Has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And then we dwell so much on the verse 3. All who have this hope in him. In him purify themselves just as he is pure. All who have this hope in him purifies themselves just as he is pure. We said last week that living a life of purity uh, is, is the new life that we have received. It's to stay away from contamination. Because in him we are holy. We have been made holy. So when we say you are practicing purity, it is to live a life that is blameless. A life without spots nor wrinkles. Or any such things in this perverse generation. And that one we can achieve it because Christ's death purchased that authority and the power to live that kind of life for us on the cross. Now remember that we are new creations. The Bible says the old is gone. And new 
has come. We are not talking about the old. We are talking about the new that has come. We died with him. That we might live in the new. Sometimes we believe so much that we can sin more than believing that we can lead a holy life. If anyone is in Christ, the Bible says he or she is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. The old sinful nature that fights against us. We studied that Paul says that we have to Crucify it. Yes, we are, sir. Paul say, as I say, we went on to say that we must draw the lines. Lines of resistance. We should discipline our appetites. And not allow the old man to rule us again. Because the old is gone. If he said that no echo. So we must make sure that it is gone. The new has come. And we have to live in the new. We concluded last week by drawing our minds by drawing our minds on the fact that sin to the new creation is a mistake. Say not so much a weakness so that the new creation will say that I can't, I couldn't help it. The helper has come already. The eternal life we have received it. and this too with us we are more than conquerors. We are able to live above reproach. We are able to be Become like the Noahs, the Daniels, Daniel and the Jobs. Job we are able to live above reproach. Sin is a mistake. Bonnet, I am from so. Now, why are we saying this? Then, in a year, Cassa, first John chapter two, you are no medica in it, verse one, you are no medica, you know, first John two, one, it's in you. This is the same apostle speaking. And I like the way he presented this one. First John 2. He said, my dear children, look at how he's addressing the church. He has seen it all. And at the time he was writing, he was also an old man. This is the disciple that Jesus really loved. That is according to his own testimony. Jesus didn't say that. But he said that he was the one that Jesus really loved. He was closest to the son of man. Man. After many years, now, he was you know, writing to the church. Now, he he says, you know, My dear children, and say, Me I write this to you Me so that you will not sin. Now, but if, now, say, Obi, not but when, now, so, and yes, uh, we are not waiting to sin because that is not who we are I'm writing to you that you do not sin I'm writing to you so that you will not sin but if anybody does sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous one. Now, so look at how you put it. I'm writing to you so that you will not sin. That is not who you are. You are a new creation. But if not but when you are not expected to go on sinning. That is why he said that anyone that is born of God does not continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. So if for any reason we sleep 
it is a mistake. I am from so. We correct it. He says no. that if we see that we have slipped, we have an advo advocate in Christ Jesus. He said in 1 John 1 9, okay, well, Johannes, and, and that that when we confess our sins, because we have slipped, when we confess our sins, because we have made mistakes, the advocate. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we sin, now Romans chapter 6, Romans I want us to understand this very well. So that we are not talking about sinless perfection, no. We are not talking about the one saved forever saved. No. That is not what we believe. But look at Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? We are saved by grace. So shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? And the apostle Paul answered his own question, by no means. We are those who have died to sin. Die to sin. How can we live in it any longer? And the Apostle John will say that if you sleep. If you sleep. Now, when we begin to see sin as a mistake, we will live a more righteous life. But when you think that sin is a weakness within you and that you can't help it, you always find an excuse for doing evil. But the old is gone. The new has come. Now, for First Kings chapter 15. I want to spend some time on this and then we'll continue. First Kings 15 verse 5. I like this particular verse so much. You see, the day I saw it, uh, it ministered to my spirit. It really challenged me. For David had done what was right in the eyes of the law. If he said David and had not failed to keep any of the law's commands. Now all the days of his life. Except in the case of Uriah the Hittite. Now lift up your heads and look at me. You see. David sinned. Sure. David, yeah, Bonnie. And he didn't think that. Now, what I'm gonna say, that was a weakness. Say, he saw it as a mistake. Oh, who is that? And the so. Bible says that he corrected it. Naturally, say, oh, see, see, no. That is why the Bible says that except anything naturally said, Jake, he pleased the Lord. Or so a radio. He followed his commands. Or dear radio. And the so. Bible says, except naturally say, Jake. So after he repented of that sin, he never went on indulging in sin any longer. So when we sin, we have an advocate in the Father. That is not what is expected of you. That is why scripture says, if if for any means correct the mistake and live a victorious life in Christ which has power over sin the Holy Ghost is not just for raising dead it is for living above sin too we want to build a glorious church and we need glorious victorious Christians who walk on this planet earth like Jesus did 
Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to continue by giving a, a just a very sh maybe a soft topic. And I will just say confidence in the law of the Lord. In living a victorious Christian life, we need confidence in the law of the Lord. You see, because the victorious life begins at where Jesus left off, and it is on the cross that the law was passed. If we say, See, we studied last week that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus cancel the law of sin and death. And then we went back into history and use the analogy of slavery to open up this scripture. Slavery was the law that permitted a human being to own buy and sell a fellow human being like a property. Then we said the other time that when Abraham Lincoln cancelled slavery, he didn't kill the slave master. Nor the slave. What he dealt with was the law of slavery that gave the slave master the authority to take someone as a slave. He destroyed that one. And we said that the power of sin over us that hooked act to the devil's yoke was effectively destroyed by the anointing. The Bible said by the anointing the yoke is broken. Because now going back to the to slavery we said that two things can just keep the slave master who, the slave who is free still in the on the plantation we said the first one is ignorance. So we need a good teacher who will be able to throw light on who we are in Christ. Then I promise you that I will talk about the second one, the unwillingness of the slave now to me, leave the plantation. Unwillingness of the slave to leave the plantation. Even though he is aware that slavery has been abolished. Why is he unwilling or she unwilling to leave the plantation? See, I will suggest that for the sake of what I want you to talk about that there is some sense of insecurity of the law he is so sure of the law not so sure that the law is able to meet his needs. That if he leaves this plantation and he leaves this slave master, is the law that is setting him free able also to meet his needs? Answer his questions and solve his problems? Because you are leaving the plantation. If it's a wolf free in Kwayenum to where? Now who can you ask? There are some there are somewhat 
some 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 if what's in the in the mind or i should say what ifs in the mind see this is why the devil is a deceiver and i want you to lift up your head and look at me you see when the law of slavery was destroyed was cancelled the slave master was left he knows it that if I let this I let this slave leave this plantation I'm going to suffer lost because he or she is my property he is helping me on this farm because of him I'm rich if I let him go, just like Pharaoh was saying, if you, you go, who is going to do this work for us? Nevertheless, he knows that the law is real. He can't keep the slave on the plantation because of the law, the fear of what will happen to him if he insists on the slave being on the plantation. And then he to me, ma. So his first card is to keep him ignorant of the law. Now when he knows that the law is passed, the slave knows that the law is passed and that he is free, the only option that this slave master has is to deceive, cast some doubt on the law and keep this slave on the plantation. But see, we are not talking about unbelievers here. I'm now leaving the slave. I'm coming to uh, the new creation. See, the unbeliever does not believe the gospel here we are talking about the christian believer who is not who is unwilling to break free from the devil and i'm saying that it's all because sometimes there's some sort of insecurity he thinks that the law is not able to hold him and then grant him a good future. Now the American free The devil casts doubts on his mind. On what God has said. He still questions like he did to Eve. Has God said? He's always questioning what God has said. Just to cast doubt on the totality or on the security of what God has said. You see, this creates some kind of fear and insecurity in the new believer and it paralyzes his will for fully submitting to the pleasure of the law I'll not be surprised that someone is listening to me who is born again and still he has some talismans on around his way. I will not be surprised. I will not be surprised that someone is born again, but on 31st night, he will still go back to the village, to the shrine. So instead of breaking free, he, he sings and as a new creation, but he still has some connection with the past. I, 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 this cast some fear on the believers. Mind. The fear of people. 
what people will say is something not, does not allow us to break free from the past. The fear of the past. People are not able to break free and accept the new law. They still think about the past and they, they and want to ask themselves, what if? What if? And it's important to me in the world, and free the echem no home. Now, the beer will be someone who say, I saw Danny Bessie, I saw Danny Bessie. Fear of the future. That year, young Nim no home so who's through. Will God be able to, if I leave this man? And it's a mature who flew or bury my one. I saw on Yamibe to me a crummy moon. Fancy that you have just landed in a crab. You don't have what where you can call your home. You meet this young man who is a married man. Ah, oh yeah, or for. And then he picks you as a concubine. Now of how the the way you can find some room somewhere for you. Now a dime be baby at the mouth. And then you hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Now what say Yesu Christ as You lift your hands, say I'm born again. Now you are still living in that room. And you are still living with that man. Even though you know that it is evil. You see, the question you are asking is what if if I break away from this man where will I sleep? Who will give me money? And then your common sense tells you that say Little by little. <laughs> little by little. <laughs> that is the kind of Christianity that uh, that is the kind of mentality that we have. Now I know the fear of future. The fear of evil. Or the evil one. And I said, or the for in this part of our world, because of our, our world view, we believe even Satan more than God. When someone dies, instead of asking what killed the person, we shall we will philosophically ask who killed him. Say your babies are said, then the cum sani pano, yen de your babies are said, wine the cum sani pano. The fear of evil, bonny, is true. Sometimes does not allow us to break free and hold on to the law of the law. Now, and to me, my young quam, my young day, your home, nay, the sucra, the etrem. In first Samuel chapter sixteen, verse one, Samuel, who made the kind, it did not see. First Samuel sixteen, verse one and two. Samuel, who made the kind, it did not see. Chamber could not mean. The Lord said to Samuel. The radi catcher Samuel said. How long will you mourn for Saul? Obejam Saul, I could see that being. Since I have rejected him as king over Israel. Now me dey ma pon say only Israel so hene. Fill your horn with oil. Fa engusha wa bemu. And be on your way. Na bra men suma on. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. Wo. Bethlehem, ye sign chain. I've chosen one of his sons to be king. If we send him, man, no, no, me, ye, or he name of us listening to what Samuel said. Not here, dear Samuel, a kind. This is not any small Samuel. We know, yeah, Samuel. We are talking about the judge. Yeah, can't or Tim. We are talking about the priests. Yeah, or yeah, or so forth. We are talking about Israel's prophets. Yeah, or yeah, Israel, dear for listening to what he's going to say. We are putting it, your or Becca. But Samuel said, No, Samuel say, How can I go? May I dare macro? If so, he is about it, he will kill me. God's word has come to him clearly. So I'm afraid of Saul. Fear of people. He's not so sure. On, on to me, that whether ye, the God who spoke to him will be able to deliver say, him from the hands of on to me, so. ye, say, osuma, no, no. Aso, obe to me, ajine, fri, saul, un, say, the unwillingness of the believer to leave Satan's plantation. Pa, o, jidi, de, ne, pe, se, obe, fri, obon, sam, leave amani, Satan's plantation. Abon, sam, e, Time will not permit us emre, emma, me, kwa, to talk about the high priest Aaron. Emma, me, in, chile, mfa, osof, peni, Aaron. Moses asked him simple question. Moses, e, bi, san, a, sem, tia. Why have you done this to the people? De, inti, na, why, yes, we, I, man, ni, pay. And then Aaron said, see the people. Enna, Aaron, say, ni, pa, ku, no. 
He was afraid of them. So he had to give in to their desire. Sarah, for fear of future, thinking that she was never going to have a child, decided to give the maid for his husband so that the, she will become the husband's wife just for her to have some a uh, baby sarah na sura no osuro dachi na na dwen ne se ontu me nya ba nti oye na dwen se ene ye te sadia na funa no ode ne e ma ne kun na na funa no awo ama no if he said na na dwen ye se ontu me nya ba dachi when Peter was enjoying with the Gentiles, and a group of people came from Jerusalem, Bra they came from James. When Peter saw them, he played hypocrisy. Ebra Petru, no niya mama mufo enya yonkufa na ebinu mufri Jerusalem ba ano. Petru hu won e hu nti ufrasi se oya ni hu nyatrum nyatrum because of the people who have come from james but you see this evening i've come to inspire you to have confidence in the word of god and the law of the law see when jesus said it is finished he meant it is finished our salvation is secured in in, in the law. It is complete in him. The law of the Lord is sure and solid. It delivers us and it will prosper us. And I want you to know, brothers, that this law was passed by God himself. Romans chapter 7. I read from 24, then through 8, verse 2. What a wretched man I am. Who me, rescue me from the body that is subject to death? Me amani for. Why not obey me if it's a woman? Thanks be to God. I said, I'm fine. I said, I'm kind of who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ah, oh, no, yes, you Christ, so edge me. So then, I fail. I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law. Me, I am a demand to name a sumo, you know, pomra. But in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Now remember that he says, thanks be to God. So God is going to do something for him. Chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set me free. Free from the law of sin and death. Now, Christo Yesu Munka Hom Homrano, Ajimir Free Bonini, O Womranum. And now, listening to verse 3. Now, faith and Chichimumi and Sano. For what the law was powerless to do, na, because it was weakened by the flesh. Now, dear Emranen to me, Anye, and I'm said, Hunamma no Yemreno. Bible says God did it. Trone say Onyanko Ponye. God did it. Onyanko Ponye. By sending His own Son. Osmo Onwa Raneba. In the likeness of sinful flesh. Boni Hunam Subamu. To be a sin offering. Ene Boni Inti. And so, na Onam So. He condemns sin in the flesh. Edu Bu Boni For Hunam Nu. Now just lift up your eyes and look at me. Na fe peja weni na she. God passed the law. Onyame. Nothing can challenge the law. It it is, it is a supreme law. It cannot be overturned by the devil. It is forever settled in heaven. Now let's examine how this law was enacted. This is very important so far this teaching is concerned. If you like all that I was saying was an in, was introduction. How this law of God was enacted. First John chapter 5 verse 9. John 5 9 I will read through to we accept human testimony. 
But God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God. Which he has given about his son. Whoever believes in the son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. Now listen to this. He is saying that but God has, we, if we accept man's testimony, God has a greater testimony. The opposite of Cheney say, say you to me, Jenny Padans, you to me, dear, and you on your own, what dance, Cheney. God has given a testimony concerning his son. Now we didn't ban who are dancing. Whoever believes the son of God accepts this testimony. Now, dear, or G. Yes, Christo, Edino. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And then John says that, and this is the testimony. So let's listen to the testimony of God. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. It is full stop. I don't know whether you have full stop in your Bible. Now, I want you to look at me here. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Now, Capital S. O. N. B. A. Capital S is set. Anna. No, son, any bar. Hey, Obobi. Any son, I'm getting a bar. Anyway, no my Obobi. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Na. Not in any human being else. In this one, the Bible says it is God's own testimony. Whoever has the son, not a son, whoever has the, the, the son, has life. Whoever does not have the son of God, does not have life. Only period. This is God's own testimony. Now, what is a testimony? A testimony is a statement or declaration of a witness on the oath or affirmation. Now, when you go to court and you want to testify, if you are a Christian, they will hand you a Bible. If you are a Muslim, they will give you a Quran. And then you, 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 you swear. By the Bible or the Quran. What they throw no and I say Quran no And then you make your declaration or statements. Now, what you are going to say is going to affect the judgment. If you don't want to swear by the Bible or the Quran. You do a solemn declaration which is also accepted as an affirmation. You see, but when you swear to an oath, the oath is to appeal to a deity or, or to someone or to a revered person. 
Anansu se onipe bia obo nmunyam no ye sronku bi ene kanta. A revered person or thing. Anansu adie bia ye bu no ene wode kanta. To witness one's determination to speak the truth. I would eat the adansu se wo be kan de wo kan e no kure to keep a promise. Afei wo be di wo boche so. So you testify on oath. Enti wo ka entam. So anytime that you want to give a testimony in the law court, you do that on the oath. When we are saying that God testified, he did that on the oath. That, that he has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son does not have life. And this one, God testified on the oath. Nothing changes that. See, what is the importance of an oath in a testimony? Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I want you to pay close attention to this one. And I'm going to read from verse 13, Hebrews 6. Hebrews As I read, I'll be explaining. When God made his promise to Abraham, he's trying to explain how God will, will, will give a testimony on the oath. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater to him, to swear by, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, the Bible says he swore by himself. God told Abraham, I swear by myself. Because if you have to take a note, you appeal to a deity or a revered person, someone greater. And there's no one greater than God. So he told Abraham, Abraham, I swear by myself. I swear by myself. Saying, I will surely bless you. Say, and give many descendants. Na what And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves. And I'm listening to this. And the oath confirms what is said. I want to repeat that. People swear by someone greater than themselves. If he said, Nipa Kadia or Sosin in one term, and the oath confirms what is said, na into a twenty na to try and puts an end to all arguments. Nintanka or the Asha Asim no more dainty. Now, sometimes we want to think that certain people and certain religions have salvation. A twenty by a night yadrin and say, or someone who do be any nipa be a one quadje. In order not to be confused, and said the bear yadrin munya and now, God's. Testifies on oath Onyame, e kantam, e that, it, that eternal life is in his son. Say, and this oath puts an end to all arguments. So, you see, don't use reason. God has declared on oath already. Don't say that so can oh, all these people go to hell because they didn't accept Christ. Every religion is religion. See, God has said it on oath. So, it's not Verse 17 says that because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with oath. God wanted to make the salvation and the eternal life in his son very clear so that no generation is confused. So he confirmed it on oath. <laughs> And 
en sachra chire boche no edi pefe no ode entam ejine mu ti na nyame empese i want to aso bi beba won adwun mu be ye wom christenene enti ode entam ena okan god did this so that by two unchanging things in which it is impossible for god to lie we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged you see out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established and god says that the bible says that god swore so that those of us who have believed in him will be encouraged that what we have believed is the right thing na tro no ma yete ase so nyankop on kantam se de be ya yenya ye beji edi no ya dwini mu ada hopefe we have this hope as an anchor of the soul firm and secure so we want you to know that you are secured when you trust in what god has said firm and secure eno na ye wo sa okra seche a entien na etimho a echremu di kosi ntwetwam no mu Brothers and sisters, the oath settles all arguments. But, but for a testimony to be valid, it must be premised on some truth. Why is God testifying concerning his son? Why is he not doing the same for any other person? Philippians 2, 5. That was who explained this. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who being the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to, to use as his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on the cross now like verse 9 therefore as a result God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father therefore as a result of what he did, God was so pleased and he has highly exalted him and he has given a testimony concerning him that life, eternal life is found only in this one. That at the mention of his name, every knee bows, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Hebrews 1 verse 4 says, so he became a much, much superior to that of to the angels. Now, as the name he had inherited is, a, is superior to theirs. That name is superior to Abraham's now, name. It is superior to Moses' name. It is superior to any other name. So the Bible says anyone that shall call upon that name and shall be saved. It is the name. It is not a name. And yet, there is none other. Uh, Peter said. Petro said. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. There is no other name given to mankind. The name that has been given 
is the name Jesus. And it was given by God. And he did that on the oath. Nothing changes it. He is the only savior of the world. John says this. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. From north to south, from east to west, the whole world. Don't say that as for our country, this is our religion. If it is not about Christ, according to my Bible, you can be saved. For God has said, Eternal life is found only in his son. He who has a son has life. He who does not have the son of God has no life. This is the word of God. You see, this is what we call the gospel. The gospel. Uh, let's go and listen to what Paul said in Galatians 1. Hmm. I am astonished from verse 6. Galatians 1, 6. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. Turning to a different gospel. He says that I'm astonished that you are quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. Which is really no gospel at all. Ah, and so any Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion. And are trying to be to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, what Pese was Sister Christo Asempano. They want to change the gospel of Christ. What Pese was Sister Christo Asempano. They want to change the good news that is found in only in Christ. What Pese was Sister Asempano. You who were Christo Yesu Mono. And listen to the Apostle Paul. That's it. But Paul. even if we, Nancy Impo Yang, or an angel, Anna Abofo be from heaven. Every throw to preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let, let them be under God's curse. Why is he saying this? See, the gospel is salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone comes to preach a different gospel rather than this, Paul says that even if we we. Or any angel says, I'm coming from heaven. And he brings a different gospel. That salvation is in Moses. Or Abraham. Or Elijah. Or is found in a certain city. He says that let him be cursed. Why is Paul calling curses? Because there are instructions on how to treat verdict. If he say, and she share what why yeah they can't assemble. When a verdict is given, there are instructions of how to treat it. You don't turn it. And this one, it is God Himself who has declared it. Let's go to Deuteronomy. 17 verse 8. If cases come before you, if cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuit, or assaults, Take them to the place the Lord your God will choose. Go to the Levitical priest and to the judge who is in office at the time. 
Inquire of them and they will give you the verdict. Kobisa, na wanchira won ataya bu. When they give you the verdict, verse 10 says this. You must act according to the decision they give you at the place the Lord will choose. Be careful to do everything they instruct you to do. Act according to whatever they teach you and the decision they give you. Emra obechre wo ni atemu obekachre wo no so enadi and now listen do not turn aside from what they tell you emani mfri asemu obekachre wo no to the right or to the left ehun enko ni fa anabenkum anyone who shows contempt to the to the for the judge or for the priest who stands ministering there to the lord your god is to be put to death now na. if the judge or the priest has given a verdict and somebody comes and show contempt to the verdict that they have given he said that the person should die na oni pe bia ro be di ahantansem na orintie osofo a ogina ho som ewrade wo nyankopon ana atemufo no sanipa no onwu eti na o kire se se obi di ahantansem a sanipa no onwu you must purge the evil from israel na yi bone no free israel now two things I want you to take close note. Of when they give verdicts, the one representing the high priest the original, or the judge, once they have given the verdict, it says that if anyone wants to turn the verdict, that person should be killed. That is why Paul says that. This gospel. It is God's own testimony concerning his son. He has given the verdict. This one is not a high, uh, an appeal uh, court. court, It's not a high court. This one, God himself declared it. And Paul says that if you want to turn it, the Old Testament says that let the person be killed. And Paul, instead of saying let the person be killed, said let the person be cursed. The second thing is this. He says that act according to whatever they tell you. Whatever judgment that has been given to you, act upon it. This is very important. For the slave who is unwilling to leave the plantation. Act upon it. And signs will follow you once you act upon it. Signs will follow you. Everything is prepared in the law of the law. Salvation is a package. When we are born again, we receive eternal life, life in abundance. Our future is in the in the salvation that we have received. Our prosperity is in the law. Act upon it. Act upon it. You see, sometimes you uh, you go to the law court and a judge will um, judge something in your, in your favor, but the one who is litigating with you is so forceful that the person will be disturbing you. Don't start crying. Once the law is on your side. Act upon it forcefully. E to de bia, se woni obi nya ntawata obi, na mo kwa se ni bia, na se wo bu atan de mawa. Ni pa ono wo twema san no, e to de bia, na o ha wadwen, na se e ba se o ha wadwen a, sa abre no yensu, na mmom atemmu a wo de ama ono, fa ye djuma. You see people talk about ancestors as for my home, as for my family, it, it doesn't matter. Because the devil was not destroyed, he was not killed. So he's going to dis destroy you, but Enforce the law. A deeper pitaka, a busiano me, and me fear dear, me fear dear. It's honey my new hunya, or bonsam no one seno, or behawagini, no mum set, and rano wafeno, for emrano a year juma. You see, there was a, a day, a some period in my life, a mribia a trim on my brabum. I was still a bachelor, not me oxygen. I was sleeping, not mother. Now for three consecutive 
days, around 11 p.m., something will pull my hair. Beye enna mi ensa anet watu aso anajube du bakon ube wese bibi ya babe so mitri wimu na watre. I will not sleep again. Me na biyo the whole night. Anajumuni na. It happened the first day. I did the kind. It happened the second day. I did to sumi enu. It happened the third. I did to sumi ensa. So by the third day I was thinking. It did to sumi ensa na fena me. Because I've not slept well for three solid days. Say anajube mi ensa na menche da na ye. And then when my hair is pulled. Na say wo kimitri wimu. I feel some sense of fear. Because I was in the room alone. Mm. Mm. Some people are pulling my hair. <laughs> you see, I was born again. See, if you are born again, it doesn't mean that the devil cannot come and pull your hair because he was not killed. <laughs> Say your wolf fra, and no interest of when some to me, mammy, so three women train. It's also when some young kuno, but in the law. The devil is under your feet. So I told myself, I have to enforce this law. So the fourth day, I, I slept a bit early. And I told myself, that I will wait for these people. This time round, I'm not going to sleep for them to come and pull my hair. I'm going to face them with the fire of the Lord. And by 10 p.m. I started blowing tongues. Up until today, nobody has come to pull my hair again. Enforce the law. Don't start crying. The devil will come and test whether, whether you understand the law. It's not about the forces in your family. It is about your ability to enforce the law. Because the law is on your side. It's not about what I will eat tomorrow. It is about acting upon the law of the law. And signs and wonders will follow you. Let me take this beautiful scripture for my... For from us, my last test. Psalm 19, verse 7. From verse 7 to 11. The law of the Lord is perfect. Refreshing the soul. He says, The law of the Lord is perfect. Refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord is trustworthy. Making wise the simple. This one says that when, excuse me, anybody at all comes to the Lord, he will be made wise. The precepts of the law are right. Giving light to their eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees, that is the law of the Lord, is firm. And all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold. Than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey. Than honey from the honeycomb. By them, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. In keeping them, there is great reward. I want to encourage you that we can live a victorious Christian life. Let us know that the law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. It makes wise the simple. In keeping them, there is great reward. Be willing to follow the law of the Lord. Once you are born again, don't be afraid of people. Don't be afraid of evil. Don't be afraid of the future. Trust in the law of the Lord. And then follow the law. Religiously follow the law. Seek to please him. 
and don't be afraid of the slave master. Don't be afraid of what you will eat. Don't steal anything from your workplace. Don't touch what does not belong to you. Because of the future. For in the law of the law, in the salvation that you have received, your future has also been taken care of. God bless us all. Be a victorious Christian. But in Kunimdi Abrabo, build a glorious church. May the Lord be with all of us.